Hello again. This is Helen, Helen Stevens, and I'm here at the True Embroidery Studio in the lovely old town of Bury St. Edmunds. And I've got the whole family with me today, so there may be the old interruption. I've got the poodle, Cass, who's been playing with threads. You see movement over my shoulder here, that'll be my chinchillas, although they're usually asleep at this time of the day. And if you hear strange noises off, that'll be my parrot. Now, I've just finished working the 12 embroideries for next year, that's um, 2022, uh, for the calendar. Um, 12 pictures, as I said, and that of course means 12 embroideries that need mounting up uh, ready for, in this case, photography, and then they'll be going into my online exhibition. And I've just about got down to the last one. And it occurred to me that uh, one of the things when I used to be teaching my live masterclass that students very often wanted to know was how I present my embroideries once they're finished. Now, I'm sure many of you, all of you, have your own favorite ways of uh, mounting up uh, your finished embroideries. Uh, this is August, I think, August from the calendar. Um, and as with all things in embroidery, there is no right and wrong way of mounting things up as long as you get the effect that you want at the end of the day. Um, but I do know that some people find that getting something nice and taut uh, on their uh, backing, whatever that happens to be, can be a little bit of a bind, no pun intended. Um, and indeed, I know that some people uh, even consign their beautiful work to the UFO drawer uh, and it lingers there occasionally for a long time before they actually get round to mounting it up. So I thought I would share with you, while the opportunity presents itself, um, my own method of mounting up your finished embroidery onto its backing board. Um, got many advantages, I feel, the method that I use. Um, it's easy for one. Um, it doesn't uh, involve you in any um, new uh, tools to use. Um, but possibly, uh, better than all of those, is the fact that it's quick. Um, as I say, I'm just getting to the end of uh, mounting up these 12 and the whole operation has probably not taken me much longer than a couple of hours. Um, so just to begin with, before we get down to the nitty gritty, uh, I like to mount my embroideries onto something which is obviously not going to do them any harm. And I use, um, this is mount card, the same type of card that's used to cut window mounts. I make sure that it is an acid-free uh, version. Uh, and also, depending on the weight of the fabric that I'm going to mount up on it, uh, I will either use a single uh, thickness, as I have here, uh, or if it's going to be something that needs uh, a little bit heavier duty, um, I will simply put two, or I have on occasion even put three, uh, thicknesses together. Um, so even if you're mounting up a really big piece uh, with a heavy fabric, um, this uh, method still holds true. Um, the first thing we need to do, obviously, uh, before we get on with mounting the piece, is to take our original embroidery off whatever it has been worked on. Um, I always use a tambour hoop myself. Um, I'm actually going to do a video on tools and that sort of thing um, a little bit later, so I won't go into that in great detail now, but whatever you work on, whether it's a tenter frame or, or a tambour hoop or indeed something else, obviously we need to get our embroidery off whatever that is. I have mine nice and tight. They're not called tambour hoops for nothing. It's because they need to be tight like a little drum. So we take our embroidery off 
uh, at this point we do uh, a dad's army quote and we say don't panic if it all suddenly looks as if it's going to scrunch itself up a little bit we will soon rectify that you can probably see the ring that's been left behind by um, my hoop uh, I tend to be a little bit lazy on occasion I must say and if I know that um, any mark that's going to be left behind although I'm careful obviously to keep my hands clean if I know that any possible mark that's going to be left behind is going to be covered by a window mount I have to admit I am a little bit naughty and I don't always dress my frame we again will talk a bit more about that um, in a later video so I'm now going to just uh, reset the camera so that you can actually uh, see what I'm going to be working on um, and then we'll start the process and I hope to be able to show you mounting up um, an entire embroidery in real time uh, so you'll see just how quick and easy this technique is and I see my cat has just gone across the room behind me I knew one of them would make an appearance So, oh, via the magic of technology, here we are again, this time uh, hopefully uh, with the light uh, in the correct place for you to see what's going on. Um, now, I showed you earlier on the mount card here. Um, for this particular piece, I'm obviously working on a cream coloured background and I choose to emphasise that by using a nice um, ivory or creamy coloured mount card. Um, if you're working a piece on a black background, of course, it doesn't matter uh, what colour your uh, background um, board is, but do just make sure that it is um, acid free. So. What we're going to do first of all obviously is position um, our embroidery correctly uh, it will entirely depend on how much um, around the edge you particularly want to uh, leave um, all these sorts of things are entirely up to you and down to whatever project you've been working on and then you're going to invert the whole thing so that you have your embroidery facing downwards and your backing board on top of it with uh, whatever colour you're using. If you are using a colour to enhance the shade of your fabric, obviously facing downwards as well. And then this is where it starts to get clever. Uh, instead of using one needle, you're going to be using two. Two slightly bigger users, uh, needles than I would usually be using, of course, because this is for um, practical purposes. And they are threaded up with mercerized cotton. Now, mercerized cotton, of course, comes in many forms. Um, but the type that I'm going to be using here, in fact, is good old uh, anchor stranded. That might seem a little extravagant, but it just so happens that I have a huge stock of anchor stranded cotton in colours that I'm never likely to use. So I'm actually being economical and using it all up. So you have your two needles and you're going to stitch down the back of the ensemble that you've set out for yourself. So one needle on each side, and then you're going to even up the lengths so that you have your beginnings like so. Then all you're going to do is you're going to stitch down the back one side to the other, just as if you were lacing a shoe trying not to get things caught up on the way. That's just to prove that this is live. And it won't take you very long at all to get down to the bottom. Now, again, it's going to depend on the size of the project you've worked, the weight of the fabric, um, and that sort of thing, as to how 
closely or how far apart you space these lacing stitches. For a project such as this, um, I find that about uh, an inch apart, uh, that's about 2.4 centimetres, those of you who are working in new money, um, and we're going to carry on down to the bottom. When we get down to the bottom, we're going to remove our needles and make the beginnings of a knot. Now, again, I've been a little extravagant here because I didn't want to run out of thread and embarrass myself, so I'm just going to get rid of that little bit of excess thread. We've begun our knot. We've got two little tails down there. Now, all we're going to do is tighten this a little bit to recreate the tension under which the embroidery was initially worked. Now you're going to ask me, well how tight is that? Well how long is a piece of string? You know your work, you know, you can feel how tight that needs to be. We don't want to be stretching things, but we want to recreate that tension. Okay, maybe it'll take a little bit of practice for you to become familiar with doing that, but basically that's all there is to it. Then you're going to tie off at the bottom. At this point, you might need to borrow somebody's finger, but I've been doing this for about 40 years and somehow or other I seem to have grown a spare finger which enables me to tie knots and hold them in place without having to ask for help. So a nice double knot at the bottom, right over left, left over right and again, and you can snip off. So we're halfway there. We're then going to turn the whole thing round the other way. We're just going to give it a little tug top and bottom or side to side and in the middle, whichever way you're thinking of as being top and bottom, and we're going to fold those two sides back into the middle again. Now we're going to re-thread our two needles. Now of course this is the point where everything may go entirely pear-shaped because threading needles live while you're recording is not always the easiest things to do but there's one done again i think i've probably been quite generous with my amount of thread i'm using here but i don't want to embarrass myself by having to start and stop over again so there we are hopefully with that one threaded on this side Yep. No, I've left a piece out. Start again. <laughs> Once upon a time, I was on a TV program that was going out live, and they asked me to thread a needle in front of how many ever million people it was that was watching. It took me a great deal longer than that. So we have our two needles threaded again and now we're going to simply repeat the process. So one needle on either side, even up and then stitch side to side all the way down. Now you'll see that on this pass uh, of the stitching so to speak for quite a lot of the time we're actually stitching through two layers of fabric um, as our material uh, has been folded over now that all adds to the strength of the process so don't be tempted to just go through one um, of the uh, layers of fabric at this stage pick up both layers uh, because that will as I say add to the strength of the process so again side to side when you get to the point where you're just stitching through one that's not a problem you can stretch 
uh, your thread across side to side like that as we work our way down. And again, I think you can probably see that this is quite a quick process. Obviously, it's taking me a bit longer today because I'm talking to you about it. But once you get into the swing of this, it really is very quick. So a couple more passes of the needle down to the bottom here, and that will be all we need. One, two, and there we are. We can do away with our needles again. We can start another knot and we can dispose of any excess. So again, we're going to go up to the top here and we're going to tighten the stitches. We're going to ask grandma to breathe in while we lace her corset just like they did to Scarlet O'Hara in the first scene of Gone with the Wind. All the way down we go, holding it taut as we go along till we get down to the bottom and we can pick up that knot. You ask your long-suffering significant other to pop his or her finger on the first half of the knot, while in fact I use my spare finger to do so, and we tie off. Now, I'd got to this stage once upon a time when I was demonstrating this, uh, when a lady in the class said in a rather loud stage whisper, oh, I see she doesn't mitre her corners then. I said, just wait a moment. Now, all we're going to do is tuck these edges under one, two, three, and four. And I think you will agree that you're not going to see a much neater mitered edge than that. We then turn our piece over and hopefully there we have a finished mounted embroidery ready to go off to your framer and to be framed up, glazed. I always like to put my work behind glass to keep it clean, ready for hanging on your wall. So there we have it. An easy and even better, a quick way of mounting up your finished embroideries, whether it be on the black background as this one here, or on the creamy background, pale background. This is the actual one that uh, I've just mounted up. Now, you may want, just depending again on your own personal preference, to um, pass an iron over your embroidery when you've finished it. You can do that obviously either before the mounting up process or once you've got it to this stage, um, you can put uh, a piece of fabric uh, to uh, keep the iron obviously away from your embroidery, depending again on um, whatever materials you're using and pass an iron over it at this stage. Um, you don't have to, of course. Uh, I think the uh, embroidery here is lying perfectly um, as it should uh, without doing that. But there is one other little tip. If you have mounted it up and you've perhaps been uh, a little bit naughty uh, and left one or two little tails um, of embroidery thread, silk, whatever, um, at the back of your work. Uh, and if you're working on a pale, a fine pale fabric like this, uh, you can, of course, always see those naughty little tails sort of showing themselves on the back. One rather clever little tip 
cheating, I suppose, but who cares, um, is that were you perhaps to see uh, a little tail hanging out just here, you can in fact take your needle, you can slide it uh, through your fabric. Let me put that a little bit nearer and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Just pop it underneath your fabric and then you can lever any naughty little tails that you have back underneath the embroidery which will hide them. If you do that then it is a good idea just to pass a cool iron uh, over the work that will just solidify where you've put them. Uh, and of course uh, if you are going to do that do be very careful that you check uh, temperatures with regards to uh, whatever thread you are using and indeed the background fabric. So as I said before there we are all ready to hang and be admired. Um, how long did that actual mounting up process take? I don't know I wasn't timing it. I don't think it can have been very much longer uh, than five minutes the actual process of mounting it up. Uh, if you um, disregard uh, my chatting and my pausing and talking about things. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video. Um, please do uh, like and subscribe to this channel if you have. Um, I'll put um, down in the space below uh, the link through to my website in case you've never discovered it. Um, and you can also search for me, Helen M. Stevens Embroideries on Facebook. Um, I will be back again with you very soon. Uh, I do plan, as I say, to talk about materials next time. And also we're going to do a video on embroidery tools, what you need for what I call my kind of embroidery. So as I say, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I very much look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.